what you're looking at are thousands of lights working together. From a distance, it just looks like any regular screen. But look up close. There are little dots that you're looking for. These are called RGB diodes. Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to Blau Films. We make independent short films and for the past two years we have been developing our science fiction 3D animation Syntactic Labyrinths. There are multiple scenes in Syntactic Labyrinths that feature digital screens, thus it was important to us to figure out how to make CG screens look really good. As you clicked on this video, you're probably also wondering how to improve your CG screens. In reality, every type of screen works completely different. From CRT TVs to OLED screens, the technology dictates how the image looks. For our short film, we are specifically looking at LCD screens. LCD stands for Liquid Crystal Display. An LCD screen starts with a very strong white light that is directed through a liquid prism and a series of polarizers. The polarized light then shines through a thin film of red, green and blue color filters, sitting so close together that from a distance our brain perceives them as white light. This is an optical illusion. Mixing red, green and blue light adds up to white light. In this experiment, I will try the two most common methods that I see used to create CGI screens, and then I will use the method that I have found to work best for LCD screens. In the end, I want to compare the three setups, and the most realistic result will be applied to the shot of Syntactic Labyrinths. I'll be doing this in Cinema 4D with Chaos Corona, but this method really works in any 3D application. For today's experiment, I'm choosing this diode. It's an LCD TV diode from our diode collection. I'll be using a 3D monitor from the Cosmos browser with this calibration texture that I made. The first thing you want to do is separate your footage into the color channels. You can do this very simply in Photoshop. With your layer selected, double click to open blending options and then right here you'll see a checkbox for R, G and B. All you have to do is turn everything off except for the one channel and then save your image. Repeat the process for each color channel and then, with a simple hue and saturation effect, make a luminance map. If you're exporting an image sequence, I'd highly recommend you use After Effects. Making a new composition with your clip and then apply Effect, Channel, Shift Channels. Then simply set each channel to full off except for the one you need. And then export your image at the settings that you prefer. Alright, and there you have it three color channels and a luminance channel. It's time to look at the diode maps. If you're using our digital screen diode pack, which is available on blaufilms.com, you can choose from these preset maps that are full screen, or you can use these single diodes inside the After Effects file. I just want to let you know that if you're using a non-commercial student license, you can download the product for free on our website. Let's make the actual screen texture. We're building a physical material that will act as the surface of the screen. We use a black color with a very low IOR and that will be our base. Next, we add a clear coat layer. I'm setting the amount to 95%. Now set your IOR value. I'm using 1.46 as I want it to look like plastic, but anywhere between 1.3 and 1.5 should look good for a screen. Let's start with creating the most basic screen. We turn on self-illumination and then in the texture slot, add your image. And that's it! So easy! It's not bad, but you'll see later what is missing. While we let this render, let's move on to the second experiment. We're making a screen from red, green and blue light by using our different color channels in the self-illumination slot. However, this is still different from making a realistic LED screen. If you want to learn how to make those, make sure to subscribe. We'll be making different videos on all the different screens. I'm putting the color map I exported into the self-illumination slot. Set the color to black and change the blending mode of your image to add. Now just repeat this process for every diode material. I have red, green, blue and a base material. Next, I'm making a layered material in which each other material goes, starting with the base on top, followed by red, green and blue. Set the amounts of each layer to 1 and apply a mask. This is where our diode maps come into play. 
I'm first setting the exposure of these layers to 3, so that makes the colors very strong in the render, and that makes it much easier to see. In the beginning, your render will have lots of mare, and actually this looks insane. But as you let it render, it will slowly start clearing up. You might be seeing a subtle grid. To make that less strong, you can lower the exposure of our masks. As you can see in this case, our image appears to be very magenta. To correct this, you can add a little bit of green light by increasing the intensity. If your image appears yellow, you should add a little bit of blue. If your image appears cyan, add a little bit of red. I don't have a video on color theory yet, but if you believe that's useful, then feel free to comment below and I'll be sure to make it. When working with a color filter, you want a translucent material for red, green and blue. In this example, you can see that white light illuminates the diodes from the back. If you look at it from really far away, the colors start mixing and it becomes white. This is the theory behind this second shader. We're using a thin shell material as your filter is extremely thin, followed by translucency for which I'm using the color map to drive both the color and the intensity. Finally, we have the same clear coat layer, except for that, the material is pretty much the same. And now we let it render. To control the color of your LCD screen, you'll have to make adjustments to the translucency value. The lower the translucency, the less light will be absorbed in that channel. If a color is too strong, that's the color you'll have to decrease in the translucency. Alright, so it's time for the comparisons. I've brought in Charlotte to get a fresh perspective. Hello! We're gonna look at screens. Exactly. I'm going to show you a few different experiments we did, and then I guess you just let me know uh, which one looks better. All right. First, we have the basic self-illumination setup. Oh, okay. That's interesting. It's kind of flat. Oh, it does emit light. It does emit light. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the next one. Oh, that's a big difference. Yeah. Wow. So it does lose quite a bit of contrast. Yeah, now you mention it. More light. More light. Oh. Here you can see them next to each other. Yeah, yeah. A very different color hue also. You lose quite a bit of saturation and light. Ah. So here's comparing it with the LCD setup. Wow. There is much more separation in the diodes or something. Yes, the, the main thing is this image is much darker. The contrast is stronger. Yeah. But we do lose saturation. I see. Here you can see them next to the previous two. There is a much better hue correction on this one. Uh, that is mainly because we're not using an additive emission where each color is kind of being affected by its neighboring color. In the LCD setup, the colors are a bit more true to themselves. Yeah, and then that also results in that you can see the individual diodes much better. I can imagine that if you pick the second one, then there is so much light coming from the screen that it kind of like, it floods the image. Yeah. The first one is too flat. I don't think it reads as a screen at all. So I would say it's the third one. Yeah, I completely agree. I would definitely say that the third one gives the most believable effect of looking at an LCD screen. It's by far the most balanced. I'm excited to see it in a scene. All right, then that's what we're gonna do. Cool. <laughs> right now we're looking at shot 19 from Syntactic Labyrinths. To me, this setup creates a really nice balance between screen brightness and environment light. The monitor looks eye-catching and it creates a good focal point in the shot. If I compare this to the feel of the storyboard, I really think we're heading in the right direction. Our short film Syntactic Labyrinths is still in development and we'll continue to share videos about our production challenges and our solutions. If you are a filmmaker and you're facing any production challenges or struggles with monetizing your short films, this month we're actually taking five one-on-one -on -one calls in which we will analyze your project and provide a tailored solution to make your project self-sustainable. If this is for you, really don't hesitate to book a slot in the calendar in the link below. This was R&D for Syntactic Labyrinths. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on socials to learn about making your own short film to everyone who's stuck until the end, thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for watching Blaufilms. Bye bye.